Welcome to Trojan Corner, The Number Devil, a mathematical adventure by Hans Magnus Enzensberger. The Seventh Night. I'm terribly worried, said Robert's mother. I don't know what's wrong with the boy. He used to spend all his time in the park playing ball with Alan, Charlie, and Enrique. Now he shuts himself up in his room and spends all his time painting rabbits, rats, and more rabbits. Quiet, mother, please, Robert said. I can't concentrate. And the numbers he keeps muttering to himself. Numbers, numbers, more numbers. It's not normal. She was talking out loud to herself as if Robert weren't in the room. He didn't used to be interested in numbers. You should have heard him go on about his teacher and the problems he gave to him. Finally, she turned to Robert and said, Isn't it time you've got some fresh air? Robert looked up from his painting and said, You're right. If I keep counting rabbits, I'm going to get a headache. So off he went to the park, a large grassy place with no rabbit in sight. Hi! Al called out when he got sight of Robert. Want to play? Enrique, Gary, Hugh, and Jamal were there too. They were playing football, but Robert didn't feel like joining in. They have no idea how trees grow, he thought. It was time to eat when he got home, and he went straight to bed after supper, slipping a thick-tipped felt pen into his pajama pocket, just in case. Since when do you go to bed so early? his mother asked. He always used to stay up till all hours of the night. But Robert knew exactly what he had in mind and had no intention in telling his mother about it. She'd never believe him if he told her that rabbits, trees, and even fish understand how numbers work and that they had made friends with the number devil. And no sooner did his head hit the pillow than the number devil was on the scene. Today, I have something extraordinary to show you, he said. Anything you like, just no more rabbits. They tortured me to death all day. I couldn't keep track of the whites and the browns. Forget it, and come with me. He took Robert to a white house in the form of a cube. The inside was white, even the staircase and the doors. There's no place to sit, Robert complained, when they went into a large, bare, completely white room. And what are those stones doing over there? But when he went up to the tall pile of objects in the corner and looked at them more carefully, he realized they weren't stones at all. They seemed to be large cubes of glass or plastic, he said, with something glittering inside, something electric. Electronic, said the number devil. What do you say we build a pyramid? He took a few cubes and laid them out in a row along the white floor. Well, what are you waiting for? Working together, they laid the following row. Stop, the number devil called out suddenly. How many cubes have we got now? Robert counted the muscles. Seventeen, he said, an unexciting number. More exciting than you imagine. Subtract one, for instance. Then you get sixteen, a hoppy number. A two that's been made to hop four times. Two to the fourth power. Good for you, said the number devil. You're getting very observant. Now let's go back to work. Each cube in the next row goes on a crack between the two cubes in the first row, the way bricklayers build a wall. Okay, said Robert. But it'll never be a pyramid. Pyramids are triangles or rectangular at the base. Th and this thing is flat. It won't be a pyramid. It'll just be a triangle. Fine, said the number devil. Then we'll build a triangle, which is what they did. Finished, Robert cried. Finished? How can that be? We're just getting started. The number devil then climbed up one side of the triangle and wrote the number one at the top of the cube. You and your ones, Robert muttered. Right, the number devil replied spiritedly, because in the end, everything always goes back to one. But where do we go from there? You'll see, you'll see. On each cube, we'll write the sum of the cubes directly above it. Nothing to it, said Robert, and pulling out his trusty felt pen, he wrote, one, one, one. All ones, he said, no need for the calculator yet. Not just yet, said the number devil. Proceed. And Robert then wrote, one, 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 two, one. Child's play, he said. Don't be so cocky, my boy. You've only just begun. And Robert wrote, one, 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 two, one, one, three, three, one, one, four, six, four, one, one, five, ten, ten, five, one. I can see the numbers along the sides will all be ones, no matter how far down we go. And that if I fill in the numbers on the next diagonal rows on either side without doing the arithmetic because they're just perfectly normal numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He climbed up and down the triangle writing. What about the next diagonal row? The one right next to the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Read out the first four numbers. 
A knowing smile came over the numbered devil's face as Robert read down the row from right to left. One, three, six, ten. Hey, they look familiar. Coconuts, cried the numbered devil. Right, right. Now I remember. One, three, six, ten. The triangle numbers. And how do you make them? Sorry, that I don't remember. Simple. One plus two equals three. Three plus three equals six. Four plus six equals ten. Ten plus five equals fifteen. Fifteen plus six. Robert went on, is 21. So you do remember. As a result, Robert could fill in more and more numbers. On the one hand, things got easier because he lowered himself closer and closer to the ground. On the other hand, the numbers got awfully long, awfully fast. Hey, you can't expect me to do that kind of addition in my head. Don't get all worked up now, said the number devil. I wouldn't be much of a number devil if I couldn't take care of this in a flash. And in a flash, he had filled in the entire triangle. You really had to squeeze in that 12,870, said Robert. You can say that again. You may think this is only good for giving you a headache. Wrong. Quite the contrary, in fact. It's good for lazy bones who don't want to bother with long sums. Let's say you need to find the sum of the first 12 triangle numbers. All you have to do is run your finger down the third diagonal row. The one that goes one, three, six, ten, and so on. Until you come to the twelfth cube. Then find the number just below it toward the center. What is it? By doing so, you have saved yourself the effort of working out what? One, three, six, ten, fifteen, twenty one, twenty eight, thirty six, forty five, fifty five, sixty six, and seventy eight. Sum up to. Oh, that's nothing. There's lots more to the triangle than that. Have you any idea what we've built? The number devil then asked. It's more than a triangle. It's a monitor, a screen. Why do you think all the cubes have electronic insides? All I have to do is turn it on and it will light up. With one clap of his hands, he turned out the lights, and with another, he lit the cube on top, lit it bright red like a traffic light. There's that one again, said Robert. At the next clap of his hands, the first line went out and the second line glowed red. Would you mind adding them up for me? The number devil asked. One plus one equals two, Robert mumbled. Big deal. The number devil clapped his hands again, and now the third row shone red. One plus two plus one equals four, said Robert. I get it, I get it. You can stop clapping. It's our old friends, the hopping twos. The next line will be two times two times two, or two to the third. In other words, eight. And so on down the line. Sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, until we come to the bottom of the triangle. The last line is two to the sixteenth power, said the number devil. And that's quite a hefty number. 65,536, in case you're interested. I could do without it. Fine, fine, the number devil said, clapping his hands, and all of a sudden it was dark again. Are you up to a visit from some more old friends, he asked. It depends on who they are. The number devil clapped three times, and the cubes instantly lit up again, though this time some were orange, others blue, and yet others were green or red. Looks like a Christmas tree, said Robert. Do you see the color-coded stairs leading from the top right to the bottom left? What do you think will happen if we add each color up? Start with the red one on top. Which is all by itself, said Robert. One, as always. Now, the yellow one just below it. All by itself. One. Now we come to the blues. Two cubes. One plus one equals two. Then the green just below it. Two green cubes. Two plus one equals three. By now, Robert knew what to expect. Red again. One plus three plus one equals five. Then yellow. Three plus four plus one equals eight. And blue. One plus six plus five plus one equals thirteen. Tell me, what is going on here with this one, one, two, three, eight, thirteen? We're back to Bonacci and the number rabbits. See how much we've packed into our triangle? Now we can go on for days, but I'm feeling you've had enough. More than enough, actually. All right, then, he said. With a clap of the hands, he turned off the colored cubes. A pity, though, because you know what I can do with just one more clap? I can light up the even numbers and leave the odd numbers dark. Are you game? If you insist. But Robert was amazed with what he saw. Hey, that's wild! Triangle after triangle within the triangle except they're upside down, and come in small, medium, and large. 
The small looks like a single cube, but it's actually a triangle. The medium consists of six cubes, the large 28 triangle number is all. What do you think will happen if we turn off the even numbers, the numbers that can be divided by two, and light up the numbers that can be divided by three or five? All it takes is a clap of the hands. Which would you like to see? Shall we try five? Yes, said Robert. All numbers divisible by five. When the number devil clapped his hands and the orange lights went out, the green lights came on. Never in my wildest dreams would I have expected triangles again, said Robert. The same, but different. Pure witchcraft. Yes, my boy. I often wonder where mathematics stops and witchcraft begins. Fantastic. Is this all you're doing? No. Well, then whose? The devil only knows. The great number triangle goes back a long way. It's much older than I am. And you're no spring chicken yourself. Me? How can you say such a thing? I'm one of the youngest residents of number heaven. And our triangle is at least 2,000 years old. It was a Chinese gentleman who came up with the idea, I believe. But we still enjoy playing with it and making it do new tricks. Nothing you can do ever seems to have an end to it, thought Robert, not daring to say that out loud. But the number devil must have read his thoughts because he said, Yes, mathematics is an endless story. Keep digging and you keep coming up with new things. You mean you can't stop? Asked Robert. I can't, whispered the number devil. But you, and as he spoke, the green cubes grew paler and paler, and he grew thinner and thinner, until they went off altogether and he was only a shadow of a former self. Before long, Robert had forgotten everything. Bright cubes, big triangle, Bonacci numbers, and even his friend, the number devil. You're looking pale this morning, his mother said when he awoke after a long, long sleep. Are you having nightmares again? Not in the least. Well, I'm worried about you. Don't be, mother. You know the saying. The devil is never so grim as he is painted. Are any of you curious about what kind of pattern we get when we light up all the numbers that can be divided by four? You don't need to be a number devil to figure it out. Just copy the triangle on the next page and take a colored pencil and color in all of the numbers that occur in the four columns of the multiplication table. With numbers above 48, use your calculator. Enter the number, then divide four, and equals, and see whether it comes out even.